Hey, welcome everybody to week four of our weekly conversations. I've got Mama Bear in the house, <laughs> Pastor I like that. Kimberly Dearman, our uh, senior pastor, and we're going to talk about hearing God today. Mm. One of my favorite topics, by the way. Which is why mm. I brought you into hey, this. Hey, all so, right. Uh, but before we do, I'd just like to kick it off with some fun stuff. Now, okay. a little birdie, mm-hmm. maybe your son. Mm. Uh, I was He's getting a big some <laughs> <laughs> big birdie. <laughs> big birdie. <laughs> Sorry, John. New nickname. Uh, he. I was asking him for sort of like some insider info, mm. some stuff that might make people laugh. So one of your first <laughs> dates with Pastor Jerry, mm-hmm. you guys go to the beach oh. and you get corrected. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you are kidding me right now. <laughs> are you serious? I'm serious. Oh my gosh. You got to tell it. I have never told this publicly. Was, I don't this think. This is why this I is... felt like it needed to be shared. <laughs> All right. Y'all keep a secret. <laughs> Uh, oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> I love the Lord, but I didn't have a lot of wisdom in cer- certain areas, uh, including um, I didn't – I, I – I, uh, I'm trying to say this nicely. I didn't always dress the way I would think a 19-year-old should dress now. Got it. Uh, I was uh, – I think it came out of insecurities, and so I would dress to draw attention, not overly, but just enough. And so um, I get this bathing suit that I thought was really cute, and I, uh, I to my standards at the time, thought it was it was good. And <laughs> I can't believe you have asked me this question. And Jerry and I go to the beach. It's probably a month after we're dating, and it's our first time going to the beach, and I have my cute pink and black polka dot uh, one piece bathing suit, and after a while, I notice he's kind of feel he's just acting a little bit awkward, a little more quiet. I'm like, is something bothering you? <laughs> and then he goes on to share <laughs> that in a very nice, corrective way, in a very nice way that he just didn't feel that swimsuit was most appropriate. And I got so mad. <laughs> I was like, and I just said, we just need to go. We just need to go. And I wrapped myself in that towel and we left. And, uh, of course, I came back later on to him and, and uh, I was, you know, I, I still thought it was funny that he said something on a date. But this is, this is Jerry. His mm-hmm. heart is, let's make sure we're doing things right. right. But then I, I had to just be honest and you say, and I let him know, you know what? I do agree. I have um, not mm-hmm. been the best at <laughs> keeping myself, uh, again, in the way that I, I would now if I was 19. Right. And so anyway, <laughs> so now everyone knows I was corrected for uh, You're corrected a on bathing a suit. Oh. It was really cute. <laughs> <laughs> but I never wore it again after that. Oh, gosh. Uh, well, <laughs> thank you. Luke. We love putting never been heard stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's definitely <laughs> one. And that was Jonathan's recommendation. So I will have a good conversation good, with my son. Good, please do. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, you have an an upbringing that you reference every now and then. You mm-hmm. have you have the, a couple of the main things that I've heard is your story. It's okay. We got a little some falling things off camera, but it's okay. Uh, right. You have a heritage mm-hmm. of is it great grandparents, grandparents, right? grandparents who were missionaries, yep. served the Lord. Yeah. And then you also have this upbringing that was through some difficult things. Yep. Um, tell us about those contrasting things as you yeah. grow up and how that has shaped you into the person that you yeah. are today a little bit. Yeah. I uh, adore my grandparents. My grandmother was one of Foursquare's first missionaries. She left this country at 19 and uh, spent 40 years in South America. My grandfather was sent to Bolivia as well, and they married in Bolivia and spent – Uh, Again, four decades. The only reason they came back to the U.S., the primary reason, I should say, is because my grandfather's health. Mm. He needed to be back in the States. But I really believe they would have both gone home to be with the Lord in Colombia. Yeah, that that was just their hearts. So I grew up with this this beautiful um, modeling or this beautiful – 
picture of what it was to love Jesus and love people. My grandparents genuinely loved people. And uh, I, you know, I was a kid. I grew up in Colum- I was born in Columbia, grew up there until I was 10. So I didn't know that they'd gone through like their lives uh, had been endangered. They were persecuted. Mm. Uh, they went through so much uh, betrayal, all kinds of things. When did you find out about those things? Uh, I was I was now later teens. Okay. And just having conversations. Mm. Um, but they so loved Jesus and so loved ministering to people that that's what came through. Mm. So when I got the call to go into full-time vocational ministry, I had zero fears. Um, I just thought, oh, my goodness, I get to love Jesus and love people. Oh, that's cool. So that was really awesome. Uh, And though I knew later on, again, in my later teens, that they'd gone through stuff, I just still saw their hearts so full of love and joy. My grandmother passed away at almost 102, filled with love and joy. And so that was beautiful. You guys got to go see her right before Uh, she passed, right? We went the week, I think it was the week before she went to be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was Jerry, myself, Alexa, Jonathan, Marlene, Riley was only like six months old. Mm. And then um, we knew Izzy was going to be a (laughs) son-in-law. So we invited him to come as well. And uh, at one point, we all gathered around her bed. And she, you know, she talked very frail-like. But Jerry asked her, Amma, that's what we called her, Amma, would you um, speak words of blessing over each one of us? And I thought, there are a lot of us here. But as she's praying, and thank God we recorded about an hour and something of her just wow. praying, blessing over each one of us. Wow. And um, man, her voice just got strong. All of a sudden, I'm like mm-hmm. listening to my 50 year old grandma. Wow. And it was, we left with the blessing of God over every single one of us. And again, so wow. glad we recorded it. Um, so. That was that she is. Uh, well, Jerry has said this that she is just about the godliest woman person mm-hmm. he's ever met, and she was pure through and through for a hundred yeah. <laughs> years. Yeah. It wasn't for a season; Amazing. it was just her whole life. Um, uh, my my uh, parents uh, had pretty rough marriage. Uh, my dad was actually a very wealthy man at one point in his early years. Um, alcohol got the best of him. Um, and it really destroyed. Uh, it destroyed his life. Mm-hmm. It destroyed the marriage, um, and everything that he had. He ended up losing, um, which is so hard to see. Uh, thank God that he l- loves the Lord. He is. Uh, mm-hmm. He actually watches a lot of the programs on awesome. YouTube, so he may be watching awesome. this one. But uh, Alexa, our, our daughter, had a really strong and beautiful conversation with him years and years ago when we went to Columbia. Wow. And uh, so I stay in touch. We talk. He's on WhatsApp, so we do WhatsApp and send videos. He's come out here. I hope to bring him out here again. So he is, thank God, delivered from alcoholism. Um, but growing up under that was was very difficult. I felt like I was a grown-up from the time. I don't remember mm. not being a grown-up. Right. And uh, then my mom uh, was difficult on her. And then we have my sister's special needs. So my mom has had a pretty rough, rough uh, life. And uh, she's an amazing woman and uh, loves the Lord, loves her family. And we're so grateful for her. So I did have the interesting dynamics um, of a family who loved the Lord. And yet the, the reality of growing up with an alcoholic dad and all the challenges that come with it, and the way it affects it affected my ability to see God for who He truly was. Right. It wasn't until I was thirty two that I got real revelation of who God was as my Father. Yeah, that's a long time. I would have already been in ministry for what twelve, thirteen years. Right. That was actually one thing I was going to ask you about. You, if I remember right, you were in a season of getting up early with some young ladies that lived with you, yeah. right? And you caught revelation. And yeah. You're a mess, and they're looking at you like, "What?" You know? Can yep. you can you tell us a little yeah. bit about that? As we're talking about hearing God, uh, we need to hear those things. From well, you know, we talk a lot about doing roles and goals, and I don't even like the title because it sounds almost administrative yeah. professional. or professional. Mm-hmm. But it really is. What has God called you to to be, and what has He called you to do in those roles? Mm-hmm. So I've been doing it 
I think now 18, 19 years, I have them all those papers from a long time ago, maybe even longer than 19 years now. Um, but it was in one of those times with the Lord where uh, as a daughter, I'm like, Lord, what do you want to do in me? And I heard the Lord say, I want you to see you the way I see you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, good, <laughs> because I was a perfectionist people pleaser. So you're, that's exhausting. Yeah, it's discouraging. You never feel like, yes, I'm winning because you always see what you are missing. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, thank you, Lord. And then what's your instruction? What are what are the goals you're giving me this year? What are you saying to me? And he said two simple things. Get my word in your ears and get my word out of your mouth. And getting God's word in my ears was not that big of a deal because we've built a life of hearing the word for ourselves, not to teach only. But this is. We cannot live without God's right. word feeding us and us being full. So that wasn't that complicated. It was the get my word out of your mouth. And uh, Jerry had uh, given me instruction over and over and over. He just kept encouraging me. You can't fight your mind with your mind. You have to fight your mind with your mouth. Yeah. Declare truth. Um, but when I get discouraged, my natural bent was to go quiet. And so I Mm. fought mind with mind, and I lost repeatedly. So I knew the Lord, when he said, get my word out of your mouth, I knew I had to do that intentionally. And so I found specific passages. You know, the one I really know impacted me was Ephesians 2.10. It set me free from pressure. Mm. It was revelation, like, oh, my goodness kind of moment. Um, And I would say it. I would say it. I would pray it. I would declare it. And uh, right about April or May, I felt worse <laughs> mm. <laughs> than when God first spoke those things. So I went yeah. back to the Lord and said, Lord, um, I'm feeling worse. So almost like, so that didn't work. What do we do now? <laughs> yeah. And sometimes we think God is silent. He's not saying anything. And oftentimes it's because he's already said. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have a plan B. Right. He's like, no, stick with what I said. Mm-hmm. So thank God I was wise enough to <laughs> to say, okay, you're not saying anything, so I'm going to continue. And I would preach to myself. I would declare, I know what you think, but that's a lie. This is who God says you are. Yeah. And it was in, I think it was July of that year where, yes, we had uh, five life Bible college at the time. They were called Bible college interns living with us. We were starting the church, so I've always... Loved having young people around me, even if I'm only a few years older, right? Mm-hmm. But I love that. So there are five girls. I said, come, stay with us. Um, this summer, we'll get up early in the morning, and I'll make you coffee, but we're going to watch some teachings. We're going to pray. We're going to go for walks together. And so we did, and it was during one of those mornings where I was had my head down on our green leather couches, <laughs> and... Uh, And I was praying. I didn't feel specifically anything unusual that day, except that as I was praying, I'm telling you, I don't know how else to say it. It was like the Lord came and he removed the glasses with which I had seen him and myself Mm. for 32 years. Wow. And he said, here's how I see you. And when that took place, Mm. it set me free. You know, John, you will know the truth. And the truth will make you free. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between memorizing the scripture, saying the scripture, but then when it is revealed, it's like the veil is lifted off of truth and you see it for the first time. And I was a mess. I was (laughs) weeping. I'm like, God loves me. Now, I knew God loved me, but I thought he loves me because he has to because he's God, Not, not because he likes me. Mm-hmm. You know, he has he has to put up with me. He's God. He's good. So he's going to deal with me. That's going he has to deal with me. Mm. I didn't realize that he actually delighted in me. I didn't realize that my imperfections and my failures didn't turn his face from me. That he was like that loving father yeah. that I hadn't experienced that when I would fall, he would extend his hand and say, "It's okay, girl. Let's get back up. I've got you." Mm-hmm. I never felt that. When I fell, I would feel like I would feel like he was saying, "Why are you down? Get up! You know better." Right. And then to hear that hand extended, that this is not me telling you do all these things, but this is you joining me on a journey, wow. 
and letting me walk with you. And then I felt so loved, loved, like cherished apple of his eye, delight, loved. And because I knew that, then I knew I am the righteousness of God. I can do all things through Christ. Ephesians, he has prepared works for me based on his ability, not my ability without him, his ability. All I have to do is just walk in them. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can rule the world. Well, (laughs) right. But it was that feeling of, do you want me to be president of the United States? Oh, wait, I'm not a citizen yet, <laughs> right? <laughs> I was a permanent, I was a, res- a resident. I had my resident visa, but I wasn't even a citizen. And you have to be born here in the U.S. I was like, but that was my feeling. Yeah. Doesn't matter if that's what you've called me to, I'll do it. Wow. And uh, so the girls were in the kitchen making waffles because that's what those girls did almost every day. They had waffles. <laughs> so we had eggs and other things. No, we had waffles. <laughs> Emily and her waffles. Tammy Sevko is one of those young ladies. Waffles. Um, But I just, I begin to tell them, like, God loves me. Mm. No, he loves me. And, you know, they're so precious. But I know now they were thinking, my gosh, this (laughs) is our pastor. (laughs) And she just now gets that God (laughs) loves her. Maybe we need to find a new church. But uh, I just remember going for that walk and feeling like, oh, those things you put in my heart when I was in my 20s. Is because you actually called me to do those. Where I would think back in those days, if if I only had the gifty to do it, I would love to do something like that. Wow. Now, I did not see myself able to do what God said. Wow! And now it was like, whatever you speak, I will. I can do it. And it was like a month later that the Lord opened this wide door with me with Foursquare. And I was invited to be the director of what was called back then Foursquare Women International, which was a ministry to women in ministry. I was 32, and I looked at the pictures of all the people who had led, and I, when they first asked me if I'd consider it, I just said, I just want you to know I'm 32. I might have been 33, and they're like, yeah, we know that. Okay, now let's have the conversation, and prayed, and the Lord said yes, and here I was, totally young. <laughs> full of love and confidence that because God said this was part of what he prepared for me, I could do it. And though things were difficult, um, though not everybody was excited (laughs) that I was in that role, um, though I had opposition and some really hard things that I walked through, I knew God was with me and it didn't affect it didn't tear me down. It didn't make me insecure. Mm. I could genuinely love people that were not nice to me without feeling like, see, you're not enough. It was just a whole new world yeah. of experiencing freedom. But it came from coming to Jesus, hearing God say, I need to change the way you see yourself mm. and you see me. And then just doing what he said, even though it felt like it was not helping me at all. Right. When you think about 32 years of a lot of stuff that you've walked through, can really a word from God like that change Mm. you? Sometimes we think we need a lot more. But when God speaks, in in what he says is the power to make everything that needs to be realigned, aligned. Yeah. And so come to Jesus, hear Mm. what he's saying, and do it. And uh, I know that I know I've had the privilege of... Um, doing things I would have, I had no idea God had for me because now I was in a place where I was confident in who I was in God. Had I not received that, that revelation of the love of God and who I was, I couldn't have led at those levels. I would have been destroyed on the inside, left bitter, you know, hurt Mm -hmm. and all that stuff from, from words, from, from people believers, but just that that don't always speak yeah. kind words. Um, and so here I am now 55, um, and I, I don't know how else to live without knowing that I've heard from God. That's where the confidence comes. Yeah. And sometimes, That's you know, you have to battle when God speaks something. You have to wrestle it out, and you have to mm-hmm. you fight sometimes discouragement. Um, I don't know if you want me to keep going. Keep going. Um, 
I, I just had shared with you a little bit earlier, and I wasn't going to bring it up, but, <laughs> uh, you know, the Lord gave me a word back in 2006 after three days of fasting um, and being with him. On that third day, he spoke to me about the call of God on my life and asked me to yield myself to it. And I did, and I recorded it because I knew this is really important. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was 16 years ago. And through the process of time, especially these last six years, there's just been waves of discouragement like, man, I don't see that word coming to pass. Right. And so, and I'm, you know, I think I'm 55. We got to get moving, <laughs> Lord, right? Yeah. And so, uh, you know, sometimes it's not like you quit, but you no longer, you know, you, you no longer look at those words and declare them. You can, I just I think I just put it aside mm-hmm. because to me it wasn't an encouragement anymore. It was a uh, evidence of things not happening that God said. Right. So then you start questioning, did I hear God? And uh, this morning, of all mornings, this morning during my sweet time with the Lord, he said, pull that back out. I need you to read it, and I need you to yield yourself back to what I spoke to you in 2006. Mm-hmm. And so I did. I got on my knees. And, uh, you know, part of what I love about the Lord is that he, you can be so honest about your heart yeah. and your feelings like he already knows them. Yeah. But there's something about being able to declare, Lord, I feel so disappointed in some things. Now, mm-hmm. if you look at my life, we're so blessed. And we're in the, you know, it's like the most incredible season for our church and ministry and our family. So it's you can't look at the circumstances and go, well, that's why, uh, you know, there's discouragement. But there are things that God has spoken that are so seem so far removed from what he said that that's where the discouragement has come in. And so this morning I, I was, like I said, I was on my knees saying, Lord, mm-hmm. forgive me. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me for... Uh, Casting away my confidence Mm. that it was you who spoke and for not giving myself to that, but just kind of going, well, Lord, if it's you, it's going to happen. But, you know, you you know, there's a difference between Lord, it's you and it will happen. But it's like, Lord, you you do it. But I'm disconnected from it because I don't want to go through the constant disappointment and then the lies that the enemy brings. And so this morning. As I heard the Lord say, bring that out, yield yourself to me. So on my knees, I repented and I yielded myself back. And I wrote on that same piece of paper, ah, April 7th, 2022, I once again fully yield myself to what you said. Mm. And I will see the fulfillment of your words. Wow. Powerful. Yeah. So God does speak. He speaks. How else do we live without him, mm-hmm. without hearing him? Right. How do we know what to do without hearing mm-hmm. him? Yeah. It's so powerful. I, <clears throat> you talk about, even in that story, persisting with what you heard. And I think there can be such a temptation to, we hear something, we want to hear something new. We want to see yeah. evidence that what we heard is actually going to come to pass. And God is very good to yes. confirm the words that he speaks. Yeah. Um, but how, I, I've, I'm thinking about this in like two lights. One, how do we stick with the words when we see no evidence? Mm-hmm. You know, you get that revelation of the love of God that sets you free in such a huge way. And yes, God can speak to 32-year-olds because I'm 31. So yes, amen. He does. Uh, life-altering he things. He speaks to three-year-olds, two-year-olds. Amen. Year amen. Oh yeah, I'm experiencing that too. Um, but also, what does stewarding the previous words that God has said mm-hmm. do for us hearing more in the future? Because I, I mm. do know that when I hear and I obey... Yeah. It seems like I almost have momentum in hearing God. Yeah. But when I hear and I don't obey, yeah. it seems like that almost tapers off it in does. a way, uh, at least with what I've seen in my life. So how do we stick with it Yeah. <laughs> to see it come to pass, but then also steward yeah. the words that God's spoken? 
Yeah, that's such a such a great question. One thing is, you know, we have to write the vision mm-hmm. so that we can see it. And this is part of why this morning Lord said, bring that back out. I need you to read again what I said to you. Yeah. So it may be a scripture. It may be a prophetic word that God has given. When it's put away, it's easy to forget. There's something about, I, I don't know, some kind of a, you know, I just have a little folder where I'm keeping the things that God is speaking, but I need to read them. Otherwise, life pulls you away and you don't even remember Mm -hmm. scriptures that he has given. So you've got to read them. Um, I think it's important to even read them out loud. Say them with your mouth. Like So even this morning, as I read what he had spoken to me, I also prayed it Mm -hmm. over myself again. Um, So hearing it, saying it, praying through it. Mm. Um, and then not trying to make it happen, right? Because sometimes we think stewarding what he said means we go get Ishmael. Right. <laughs> right? right? So God gives Abram a promise that is uh, a little more radical than what he gave me. <laughs> <laughs> and But not by far. I don't think. I don't know. It doesn't feel like it. Um, but he believes God. And then it's in the waiting. It's in the waiting. Do not grow weary while doing good, for in due season you'll reap if you don't faint. It's in that waiting where it seems like, did you really say? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, this was a question is, did I disqualify myself? And sometimes that comes back from that that, uh, works mindset of, am I doing good enough for you too? And I have to... right. Tell the truth, you know, God, where I have missed it, where I have not obeyed you, then forgive me uh, and I repent. But that condemnation that comes, it says, see, you're never going to be able to carry that out because, look, you have this, you have that, you have the other. Boy, you better counter those lies with truth out of your mouth immediately right. or they begin to sink in and it kills away that that faith that mm-hmm. God actually is saying this for you. Much easier to believe for others than for you. Yeah. Um, And then, you know, you surround yourself with people who through faith and patience are inheriting the promises. And you listen to them and you ask them the questions. And like this morning, you know, I have a conversation with, uh, with Liz who is leading the charge for She Leads America. And she's telling me stories that only God could do. In Washington, D.C., like stuff that you just don't think happens, Mm -hmm. but it happens with her because, and this is what she says, she said, I just love it. All I'm doing is listening to God and going, let's do it. And then he brings it all to, and it's crazy, and he brings it to pass. Mm -hmm. But as I'm listening to her, my faith is being stirred, and I'm being strengthened by her testimony. So surrounding yourself with people who are inheriting the promises. Yes. And as they're speaking, you know, as they're sharing their testimonies, Revelation says the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy that says the same God that's doing that for Liz is the same God who promised me who will do for me. Right. And so you you hear the word, you read what he said, you declare it out of your mouth, you combat the lies with your mouth. And you surround yourself with people who are experiencing, you surround yourself with people who have heard God and are experiencing the breakthroughs in their lives, and it strengthens you. And then you come, you know, to the Lord with the discouragement and whatever else is going on. I said, Lord, any deep-rooted issues that Mm -hmm. I don't even recognize, would you heal those Mm -hmm. and strengthen those and cleanse me? from stuff I don't even know so that I can run with what you're saying. But you you keep and you don't let go and you don't let go and you don't let go and you don't let go. And in stewarding, sometimes it's just praying over what he said. And it's also stewardship. Stewarding God's word is you. Let me let me back up, back up. The way you steward what God has said is by continuing to be obedient in the steps he gives you. Right. That's how you steward his word. Even if the step is just saying yes. It's just saying yes. Right. Or just pray it or sing. Yeah. Sing over it. Yeah. 
or step out and say yes to this. Where we get in trouble is through period of time, you know, especially I think for us who are older, and I know 55, I think is young now, but when you're starting to look at the second half of your life, I have the lie is you got to hurry up. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, no, wow. I'm not, under, I will not give into that pressure of you got to hurry up. Yeah. Um, you know, Caleb took his territory when he was 80 and he had the strength of when he was 40. So I'm like, if I need to be 80, <laughs> Amen. I contend for that strength of 40 and I'm still going to take the promises. Mm. But uh, it's through that period of the waiting that you can get weak to the point that now you try to help God. So uh, Abraham, he was convinced he knew God said it, but that time, boom, 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 lapses, and you're getting older, Abraham, and so is your wife. And so, you know, somebody comes up with a good idea, his wife, and, uh, you know, what happens? She says, hey, there's a young maiden here, and so— have a child with her, I told Jerry, that would never happen. I'm like, you're going to have to depend on God because there ain't no maid servant for you, buddy. Anyway, have you those ever, are private conversations. Have you ever wondered if she did that to find out if he was the issue? The thought has never crossed my mind. I, I, I honestly think my dad presented that thought to me. <laughs> that sounds like a Does Dan like thought. sounds like a Dan thing? He, I think he said, what if she did that? To sort of get rid of the – because because that would have been so shameful it as a woman especially, right? Day. If you can't yeah. have children. But if if he – if it would have been like he couldn't get the maidservant pregnant, then she would have been like, it's you, buddy. see, it's you. It's not me. I, I've kind of always wondered that. Like if in her mind she's thinking, let's get the blame off me. I, that's a great concept. That makes sense. I, you know, we won't know till we get to no, heaven. No. But now I have a new question yeah. for for Sarah. <laughs> exactly. What were you thinking? Yeah. My my thought was that uh, she's getting older, oh, and absolutely. carrying a child and birthing a child. That's and caring also a reality for a child. It's like, listen, buddy, I'm getting <laughs> up there. I was already old, but now I'm older, and it's like, here, let's just get this thing done. Let's get the promise of God done. It doesn't have to be the way He said it. Because right. the end result is you would still have a child. But God is just as interested in the process as he is in the result. And so That's we know that right it there. didn't, It didn't. God said, I'll bless him, but he's not the one. I'm sticking with my plan. And so stewarding is just staying faithful to the little steps he gives you, even sometimes when that is, when the steps are do nothing but sing, pray, do nothing. Um, otherwise, we try to help God, and that's where we delay the plan of God. Right. I think he would have – Abraham and Sarah would have had Isaac a little sooner had they not mm. gone for plan B. Right. So I really don't want to delay God's plan. Yeah. And obviously the challenges that followed, yeah, we don't want to take shortcuts. Continue, the challenges that continue still continue exist. Yeah. follow because yeah. of that decision. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so now in this season of your life, and I've been at The Rock for almost – half my life at this point next year wow. will be half my life. That's cool. You, you, at least since I've been around, it seems like you've got more opportunities. The Lord's doing more things, putting you in more positions um, to have influence. How then do you steward God? See, see, cause some people need to steward God, God's voice to just do the one thing he asked them to do. And then when you've got, a lot of the things on your plate that God's asked you to do. Mm. <laughs> How do you steward God's voice in that season? Because you can then easily get into a get into a almost a reasoning like this seems like a good thing. Yeah. But is it a God, a God thing? thing? Is it exactly what He said? Have you had to put the brakes on in those things? Have you have you had you know the Lord lead you in some of those ways? Because I. I just think as you get more and more opportunity, it can feel like, man, we're just flowing in this. And and I love the heart of David. He yeah. wins a battle yeah. and the exact same problem presents itself yeah. and he goes back to the Lord. He does. And then the Lord says, don't do it that way. Yeah. Go around back. And so I just, have you had any of those <laughs> instances with the Lord? I'm gathering that's just a yes a by your chuckle. <laughs> oh my goodness. Absolutely. I, I'm a dreamer and I have a big heart and anything that can help people... 
and serve people, my heart naturally wants to do it. So I've had to learn just because my heart wants to do it doesn't mean that it's what God's saying. Uh, I learned in my 30s that the Holy Spirit even shows us things to come. So don't assume because you hear God say something now that it means he needs you to do it right now. Because I, I jumped the gun a few times okay. um, thinking God spoke it, so we got to do it. And then it didn't quite go the way I thought. And it was like there is there are things that God says for now, but then there are things that are to come. So I, I've learned, I call it the art of pondering, okay. where you ponder in your heart and you say, Lord, is this of you? And if so, would you settle it in my heart? Mm. You know, when I got asked uh, to consider going through the process to be a district supervisor, I was 42. Um, so I think I may have been the youngest. Uh, I don't have my degrees. I knew everybody else did. Um, I wasn't a solo senior pastor. I'm a co-pastor, but I was, didn't serve as the senior pastor. And uh, it was going to be leading and overseeing 180 churches. I had just stepped down from being a kid's pastor. So I just went back and said, Lord, what are you saying? Because if this is you, then we're going to run. And if this is you, then you're with me. But if not, there is no way on earth I'm going to do this. So I, I asked, could I have three days? Or I think they gave me like three days. And in that time, I just pondered and went back to, Lord, you've said some things to me. Um, there was no guarantee because you actually had to go through a process too. I just right. need to know what do you want me to do. And so I woke up one, I think it was during the middle of the night, and I just wrote down a whole bunch of stuff. And as I wrote it, I'm like, I knew the Lord has called you to do this. And then uh, when I talked to Jerry, he's like, I know this This is the Lord. So the art of pondering, um, there are some things sometimes where the Lord's already been speaking to me about, like right now, women. There's just something. Not, it's not a prideful thing. It's not uh, women take over the world. Um, but there's something that God is stirring in the hearts of women to use their voice for righteousness mm -hmm. and influence. And so my God has been speaking to me about that for a while. And so here I've got actually two different incredible opportunities, which my heart would naturally go towards. So I had to really pull back got and it. go, I can't just say yes because you've spoken to me about it or because I see it. So one of the things that I've learned to do is, uh, for example, with She Leads America, it you know, talking to the leader, I'm like, oh, my goodness, this so goes together with what the Lord's been speaking to me. But again, I wasn't 100% sure. So uh, I went to an event that they had, and I said, Lord, at this event, would you confirm? And I told the leader, I don't know that my answer will be yes, but can I join you? And I just being there, the Lord will either settle mm. that this is him or, you know, you get that sense of this is not right. this is not him. And so being there, I know exactly the moment when he spoke, and that makes a difference. Um, I, I remember one time— the Lord called me to a new season, and I embraced the new things. But I remember, and we were early in our church years, I remember going to our Bedford house, and I fell back on my bed. I was exhausted, and we had young kids. I was like, but you know, you know when you're exhausted good, and you're exhausted like I'm drained? And I heard the Holy Spirit say, you've embraced the new, but not let go of the old. Mm. And I was like, and so he began to show me, I called you to do this, but you're still hanging on to this. And part of it was, but I don't, I like that. I don't want to miss out. Yeah. Right? And he was saying, but that will bring distraction and it will drain the life out of you. So I had to go back and say, all right, Lord, I embrace what you have, even though that means letting go of something that I love. And uh, I did. And I remember, again, you just feel the grace and uh, mm. the exhaustion wasn't there, but I also remember having to, you know, fight my thoughts of you're missing out. Look what's happening over there. You're missing out. And I was like, nope, Got the Lord it. called me to do this here. So I'm going to stay here. That's good. The fear. What is the fear of missing out? Oh, yeah. FOMO. FOMO. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I had it back when before it was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, so last thing and maybe really consequential for some people. How do you, um, when it comes to hearing God, I've heard you share a lot of stories, mm -hmm. probably not 
on stage about how you've heard the Lord for things for your family, yeah, for your kids yeah. growing up yeah. and things like that. Can you talk about that a little bit? I've got four young boys, yeah, six, four, two, and seven months. Love them to death. Just so it's crazy, by the way, just because I was there when you were born. Yeah. So to think yeah. the young man, the baby that we were there right. to hug and now has four. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, so, um, because. Just my wife and I in the season that we're in yeah. <laughs> with so many, you know, <laughs> and all that. The energy that four boys yeah. can bring all at once. Um, we're finding ourselves leaning into that because we've leaned into yeah. the, the right principles of parenting. We've yeah. leaned into the word of God for that. We we understand as much as we know <laughs> right now, but we're, we've really leaned into that. But the words that God can speak... <sighs> And how we hold on to them. How yeah. do you fight for those things yeah. through maybe harder seasons? Yeah. Uh, I'll go back to some of the principles. Write down what God says and yes. date it. <laughs> yeah. That's date good. what God says, write it down, keep it in front of you, and do what He says. Mm-hmm. Um, because the Lord will speak. Oh, the Holy Spirit, He knows not only what's happening in the hearts of your children. But he knows the traps of the enemy. He knows what's coming down the road. And he will guide you yeah. uh, with these kiddos, raising them up right. in the word, but also training them up for the call that he has for them. Yeah. And uh, you know what? My biggest regrets as a parent is not that I didn't hear God, but it's that I didn't always value enough what he said to stick with it. Mm. Um, and I'll give you a quick example of how practical God is. When Alexa was a baby, um, the Lord, and I say the Lord because I didn't come up with this as I was praying over her, the Lord showed me some exercises to do with her, with her arms and her legs when she, you know, she was six months. So to do some exercises with her arms and legs, and I thought, well, I'm sure that's good for them. Mm -hmm. And so I would do it, but then it doesn't seem consequential, right? So then you kind of just stop doing it because... Your mind, whatever, you just don't think it's that important. You don't stick with it. When she was in fourth grade, she was struggling with writing and certain things, so the teacher recommended that we send her to um, somebody that could do a test on her. And um, so she did. She went through some tests, and the results, the lady said, asked me, she asked Jerry and I, she said, did Alexa, back then Alexandra, Mm -hmm. did Alexandra crawl? And we said, no, actually, she didn't. She took her first steps, like, barely at eight months. She was on the move. And so crawling was never a thing. She was standing up and, you know. And so she said, okay, that makes sense, of where she was struggling with some motor skills because crawling actually develops certain motor skills in children. Well, I didn't know that. It's the movement of the exercises the Lord had shown me. Ouch. Ow. Yeah. And when she said that she missed those motor skills, I just, all I heard is just, I just remember God's word, get her to move her legs and her arms. And uh, I just thought, oh, Lord, you do your part. But if we don't value the things that don't seem consequential, Mm -hmm. then we miss out. And see, I think if, if we knew the reason why God spoke, spoke things to us, if we knew why he was telling us... Oh, yeah, we would do it. We would do it. But oftentimes he comes with just a simple instruction that doesn't Mm -hmm. seem that significant. And then later on you find out, oh, that's significant. There were several things that I could Mm -hmm. uh, point back to uh, of things that I saw my kids um, struggle with uh, that the Lord had given me instruction for and I didn't value it enough unintentionally to mm. carry it out. And so I had to deal with my own stuff like, oh, Lord, forgive me. Right. But he's practical. He doesn't always speak, you know, spiritual. Everything right. he says is spiritual, but he's so practical right. that he'll give you things that are actually help, but they don't seem significant mm-hmm. at the time. Yeah. So I, as parents... I think the most important thing is, you know, when you do your roles, your goals, and you're saying, Lord, in this season, what are you saying for my child? What do I focus on? And you 
You write those things down. You stay focused with them. You keep evaluating, am I doing what the Lord said? Uh, and then you invite the Holy Spirit to guide you every day as a parent. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I remember we were at a Disney in Disneyland waiting for Star Tours. Star yeah. Tours? Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, we were just standing, the four of us in line. It was our family day. We were standing in line. And and as I looked at Alexa, poor thing, I'm, I'm not picking on her today, <laughs> but I'm just, these thoughts are coming back. And it's nothing that she wouldn't uh, be comfortable with me sharing. But as I looked at her, the Holy Spirit showed me where the enemy had come in to bring some major um, stuff into her life, mm. yucky stuff. And so as I'm looking at her, I mean, Disneyland's it's not a spiritual place. We weren't praying. It was just the Holy Spirit gave me uh, an insight. He gave me a, maybe a word of knowledge. He showed me something. So after I think it was that night or the next day, I, I gently came and I told her something about what the Lord had shown me. And she said, no, 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 no. I'm like, mm. and later on, after a couple more conversations, she said, you're right. That's exactly what's happened. Mm. And so we were able to close the door. I just thought, oh, Thank Holy God. Spirit, how precious yeah. you are to yeah. direct us. He cares about our kids. He cares so about good. our marriage. He gives this instruction mm-hmm. that through his word, but also through those times of prayer and just asking him, Holy Spirit, speak to me. When you become dependent on the Holy Spirit, he'll speak to you at Star Tours line. Yeah. One of the greatest wow. words he gave me about the young generation was at a preview for a movie in a theater. But when a certain line came on, I start, I start bawling. Of course, the movie had, and I'm like, and I knew what he was saying for the generation. Mm. But you ask him, I need you to speak to me. You know everything about everything. Speak to me. And when you do, he begins to just show you. And if you can value what he says enough to actually Mm. do it, it produces greater than we could have imagined. He's the best parent to our kiddos. And he will speak to you. He'll give you prophetic words. See, uh, Virginia, Jerry's mom, had a word before Alexa was born. We didn't know if she was... We were having a boy or a girl, but the Lord gave her this word. She's a mighty warrior. She's a mighty warrior. And uh, and she definitely has the warrior uh, qualities mm-hmm. for sure. <laughs> but um, there were certain words the Lord gave us over her and through, through a period of several years where we were literally fighting for her life. Mm-hmm. Those words were the weapons <laughs> that we right. used. God has spoken. She is a mighty warrior. Uh, the promise that he gave us from Isaiah 54, all our children shall be taught by the Lord and great shall yes. be the peace, the wholeness of our children. Mm-hmm. And you use what God is saying to you through his word and the prophetic words. You wage your warfare with those words right. and Satan gets whooped every time. Yeah, But you right. stick with it and you stick with it. Yes. Amen. Uh, recently, my wife and I, my wife and I was never, um, you know, like big on homeschool. But yeah. <laughs> we had our two oldest in homeschool, and uh, and she's got a wedding photography business. Our schedules are yeah. full, and so, but she started to feel like I think we might need to pull our kids mm-hmm. out. I think you know most of the story. <laughs> yeah, and um, and it was interesting because she says that you know, and I go, mm, that mm. seems like the Lord saying something because that's completely opposite of what you've said. Right, and so we go to pray about it, and it's burning inside yeah. of me. Like, and I, I cannot get peace about it. So I so I said, okay, end of the semester, we're going to do it. And uh, I think at that time it was maybe October or early November or something like that. End of the semester, we're going to do it. And I just, I can't. That doesn't feel good. I'm like, end of the month. Uh, I just never got a peace. And I finally made the decision, mm-hmm. like, this week we are pulling them wow. out. And wow. um, called my family, prayed over it together. Yeah. Actually, through my sister, she she sort of shared a word that mm. really solidified it. And uh, on that Friday, we pulled pulled wow. our kids out of homeschool, explained to them, you know, why as much as we can, and yeah. blessed them on our way out. and And uh, it was amazing. It was like, mm. um, it was like, especially my oldest. We saw it with Judah, my oldest. It was as if all the life inside of him returned. Wow. After a few weeks of being home yeah. and my wife teaching and 
and the Lord's just given her a grace to do that and all these other things. She's incredible. Yeah. But but if we had not followed the Lord yeah. there, I don't know what we would have not avoided. And right. sometimes that's the hard thing is you're you're I don't know what I'm gonna avoid. So do I really fear it that much? Yeah. Anyways, so it's so important to follow the Lord. If um, he could play you yeah. the video of why, you would go Done. Thank God. Yeah, seriously. Thank God. Yeah. He leads us. He does his part. Mm-hmm. He does really his good. part. Yeah. And all we have to do is be crazy enough to trust him. Mm-hmm. He's so trustworthy Amen. and just do what he says. Yeah. Every area. Yeah. Marriage, parenting, yeah. influence, right. calling, everything. Right. I I feel like well, I haven't done this with any other episodes, but if you're watching, listening to this, I feel like right now is going to be a really important time to go before the Lord. Yeah. And to say, God, what we we usually end these on a lighthearted note, oh. <laughs> but we started on a lighthearted note. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, let's end differently. Let's for end sure a little from differently. The beginning. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I feel like it's really important for people listening right now to go to the Lord to yeah. write some of these things down yep. that you know God has said, yep. and to bring yourself back to it and yep. to say, Lord, I yield to this. Help me even in areas that I've missed it. There yeah. may have been some things highlighted during this time where yeah. you go, shoot, I did not listen to God, and now we're paying for it. Yeah. May the Lord redeem the time. Yes. May he make up for your mistakes, yeah. bring grace where you need it. And so uh, would you just – would you pray over everyone listening, yeah. and we'll close it like that. Yeah. But I, I feel like if people were listening to this, I know you're catching some things personally. Yeah. So yeah. if you would. And I do think some will write – And some and many need to pull out what they have already written. Right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Father, we're so grateful. You are so good. We don't say it like a cliche and we don't say it casually. We're just overwhelmed by your goodness, your continued evidence that you are faithful to your word and you are faithful to us. Lord, thank you. That uh, Jesus, you specifically said that it was better for us if you would leave here the earth and would go back to the Father, because when you did, the Holy Spirit would come, and one of the things He would do would guide it would be to guide us Mm -hmm. into all truth. So, Holy Spirit, we yield ourselves afresh to you. We are so dependent on you, Mm -hmm. and you do your part. And so, we're saying to you that. We will hear you, and then we ask that you would strengthen us to follow through. Oh, Lord, help us. Help us to hear you and help us to do what you say, not so that you love us better, not so we can check off some box, but because you are leading us into abundant life and your Mm -hmm. words bring life, bring answers, prevent disasters. Lord, thank you. We depend on your voice. Thank you. You said that your sheep would hear your voice. Mm -hmm. So we each have the ability to hear you, and you will even teach us how to hear you. Thank you for your word that it is you speaking to us. So we already have one venue that we know you speak, but we also thank you for that, the precious Holy Spirit who takes the written words, the the logos, the logos, and it becomes rhema. It becomes God breathed to us. I pray that right now that you would bring to remembrance promises that you have given yes. to your sons and daughters, promises that maybe were so long ago that it feels too late, too much has happened to where it seems like there is no way. I thank you. Your calling and your gifts are irrevocable. Yes. You are the God of redemption, so you redeem the time. You redeem our mistakes. You redeem and forgive our sins. Mm -hmm. So everything that would disqualify us because of your mercy and your grace, you bring us right back into a position where we can walk out your promises. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Help us not to grow weary while doing good. For at the appointed time in the due season, we will reap if we do not faint. Strengthen us to not faint. Lord, may we hear you. May we uh, declare and decree your truth. And I pray that you would surround us with godly men and women 
those who are inheriting promises, that, Lord, that we would be stirred and strengthened by one another, by the testimonies that are coming through. Father, I pray for those who feel so lonely in their journey right now that you would send the right person or the right group of people that they could be a part of a community that strengthens one another, that reminds one another that believing you and standing in faith is worth it because you are faithful. We thank you. We thank you. May every word that you have spoken over every person listening, may every word come to pass in Jesus' name. Jesus. Your intention is that no word fall to the ground, mm -hmm. but that every word come to pass. So let it be so in every heart, in every life, regardless of the impossibility. With you, all things are possible, and we yield ourselves fully to you. And we say thank you. We will fulfill your plan. We will glorify you on the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.